So I'd like firstly introduce this concept and, and idea. This is, uh, was uh, during one of the <coughs> uh, steering committees, I think it was in Dublin, that uh, we came across with this idea that we should also try to address <laughs> uh, an audience that uh, we don't focus too much, which is the operators and the concessionaires and the owners. So since that uh, workshop in Dublin, we have been maturing on this. <laughs> and what I will present here is basically the fundamental idea and the concept of this document, okay? Um, so uh, I'm leading this document mainly from the point of view of the Innovation Committee. Uh, was uh, <laughs> a contribution of the Innovation Committee. By the time I invited Helmut Wenzel to participate in this document, uh, basically because uh, this, since we want to focus on these audience operators and concessionaries, people with a lot of experience with these people are highly valuable to produce, uh, a, let's say, an efficient document to be disseminated in the future. <coughs> and then Sebastian as well, because I think to balance this scientific approach with a practical point of view, I think we have a nice team to present this document. So. Uh, Basically, I will just present the concept and the idea. As I said, this document is undergoing. <laughs> um, why we need, in my point of view, this uh, guide for operators is that, in fact, we are doing research and uh, <laughs> developing our scientific knowledge on real structures. Yes, it's not only on the labs uh, or in the computer software. These structures are in the field, yes? So every day we use them and some, some people are responsible for their management, yes? So, and that responsibility, uh, it's assumed from some decision makers. So they, they sign some contracts and they are responsible for their <laughs> maintenance. So, but as Helmut said uh, in his presentation, these decision makers uh, are mainly lawyers or economists, uh, and at all they are probabil probabilistic based people. So, in, uh, as we act, we as experts, this community, this network, I think, uh, <laughs> since we should also keep thinking that at the end, all these structures that we aim to apply the value of information theory is in field, we have this obligation as well try to push a document <laughs> that is written to a level that is for a non-expert audience, okay? As Helmut said, and I repeat, that perhaps an economist can understand something about it, or a lawyer, or whatever, okay? So that was the fundamental uh, idea of producing this guide for operators on top of these two previous guidelines that has been presented by Sebastian and Dimitris. So then, <laughs> What was the idea of framing this document on the guidelines? So I put here an idea, how I see it from my perspective. So we have these three guidelines, <coughs> which I think that uh, from the left to the right, the level of detail decreases. So the first one, which was presented by Sebastian, is very deep, very dense from a mathematical point of view. The guide for a practice engineer is less, it's a little bit more readable, let's say, for uh, people that want to get into the subject, they want to learn, they want to know what are the basic tools. And finally, <laughs> on the top of all th these two documents, there is something that helps who decides, yeah? Because <laughs> if you think about bridges, tunnels, dams, buildings, someone takes a decision. And normally, he's not neither the scientist, neither the practicing engineer, is the owner, the concessionary. So we need also to articulate something specifically for them. I've been working <laughs> closely with Sebastian and Dimitris on this, and also to, between us, uh, articulate how this document should be uh, seen as a whole, as a, <laughs> as a, not as a, uh, documents that are not, uh, uh, they are uh, isolated, but in fact, they are linked properly. And if you look what I present here, if you start with something that you are at all an expert, you can start with the guide operators. Then if you want further information, further details, you go down 
and go down until to the level of the fundamentals of probabilistic analysis, yes? So what is the backbone of this guide of for operators? So the idea was trying mainly focusing on the case studies because if this is for operators, it's a real structure, so the work that is being done in working group four is quite valuable for this document. And uh, <coughs> the order of inputs to extract information was this, fact sheets, conference papers, and journal papers. So try to see how this develops in terms of maturity of the knowledge and information that we could feed into this document. Uh, and as I said, mainly from the portfolio of the working group four. Uh, and what is the structure that is being proposed? So first of all, it's a very short document. If you think or if you put in a position of a owner or a concessionary, if you give to them a, a guide with 10 pages, it's already too much. So we are trying to push this as much as possible, the shortest possible as possible. So mainly two parts. So there is a one part that I put here up to five pages maximum where we try to give some recommendations towards the cost benefit efficiency in asset management, which we want mainly aims to effectively communicate the, <laughs> the main outcomes on this work on the case studies. Um, and in the second part, some very short, two pages, that may help them, based on what they read in part one, which is grounded on the case studies portfolio, if, of course, we cannot promise everything, and this is not a, <coughs> a document that will solve all the problems, but as Jochen presented, and is some case studies that he put here, four or five, if, let's suppose that a, <coughs> a owner has a structure very similar to one of these case studies, let's suppose, and he can see clearly that uh, this is quite interesting and I see some uh, potential of uh, application or replication of these to my structures, there is a second part that can help them to expose what, could, what they want based on these case studies to the authorities. Because at the end of the day, there are contracts that are signed and they want, for example, <coughs> to change some parts of that contracts in order to allow them to see this investment as a cost benefit. Because one of the things that we should also think about is that if we ask owners to invest in ACGM and at the end of the day they keep continue doing the same plus ACGM, this is not a good uh, outcome. So part one <laughs> is being structured mainly on these uh, five parts. Uh, we are trying to put each part in one page maximum. So the scope, problem, and statement, objective in a, in a language that is very simple and understandable. So what, from the decision maker point of view, is being uh, covered? Why, from the decision maker or our point of view? Here we mix both perspectives, there and ours. And how this can be handled. And here we contribute with the work that we've been doing in these <laughs> case studies. In the page two, we give some insights on what could be recommended to do based on the case studies portfolio that we have at, uh, so far. In page three, we present the portfolio that we have in the case studies, okay? Basically, a very short list with the proper reference for further details. Uh, and hopefully, page four, and this is depending on the outcome that we will have from the case studies for journal publications, is if we can put here the cost benefit evidence for each type of case study, okay? So for the operator, when he reads it, the most important that he will like to read is this part, is what I can gain from this, yes? And finally, <laughs> not to put this document as a, in a closed form, but put it, uh, what is the path forward for the future? Yes, so to open this document to them, to their inputs. <coughs> the part two is like a kind, I don't, I don't like that term, but I don't have another better until now. It's a kind of a request form where if an owner or a concessionary, <coughs> after reading this document, based on the inputs that we have from the case studies portfolio, they see quite similarities 
on their infrastructure park, either if there are bridges, buildings, tunnels, dams, whatever, they want to present this to the authorities as a request to change something in the contracts. So we put here <laughs> what, for example, what they have as evidence and benefit of utilization of ACHM, if they have already some, let's say, case studies applied, even in a single structure and they would like to expand, whatever, uh, what is the ACGM based strategy? What are the type of sensors that are being using? What type of <laughs> uh, information that are collecting? What is the precision, whatever? Uh, here, something that they, I believe that they want to see clearly, what is the in fact imp impact towards a better serviceability and safety of the structures? So they inspect, they monitor, what could this lead to an improvement of efficiency in the internal protocols of the company? Mm -hmm. And here they could put what they are asking for, changing these contracts, based on this monitoring information. And as an attachment <laughs> in this request form of maximum of two pages, they could attach some documents that could come from this cost action. For example, if there is a case study very similar, they could pick one of these case studies, just to show evidence and strengthen their, re their request for changing some <laughs> issues in the contract. Finally, I don't have too much to say because this document, despite that being very short, is very difficult to write it properly, but it will be presented, uh, the fundamental idea and the concept in the YAPS conference in Gimaraj. So I will detail a little bit more step by step of these components. Uh, <laughs> but as a final remark, uh, is that uh, I'm quite sure, uh, let's say, I'm pretty sure that uh, this document, if properly written, if we succeeded in put it in the correct terms, it might have a huge impact near of these audience that at the end of the day are the people that sign the checks either for maintenance, either for research, either for implementing systems. So this is uh, uh, an audience that for sure we should not disregard at this stage and taking the momentum and all this work that has been done during these four years. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for the three presentations. So we have some time for Comments and questions? Yeah, Michael. Yeah, let, let me start in the, uh, in the wrong order. Uh, so, Hilda, uh, I noticed a little bit of the text <laughs> on yeah. your last slide. Sorry. Uh, oh. And uh, it concerned uh, showing, yeah. The, yeah, showing the evidence uh, uh, for the benefit. Uh, associated with with uh, structural health monitoring, and um, uh, where was it? I, I read uh, that it was uh, in increasing evidence that a payback is given to the owners of sources uh, in terms of reduced maintenance cost and or increased structural safety. I think. I think that uh, that a selling point uh, for the future is that any passive means of structural safety, which can be replaced by a far less material and energy consuming active means, uh, will help uh, make the built environment much, much more sustainable. And uh, I, I think that uh, that uh, here we can we can really hit on one of the very very soft points uh, in the in the construction industry right now. So I, I would uh, I would actively use this as an argument wherever wherever we can use structural health monitoring to avoid using uh, material again to avoid building something new, avoid uh, renewals, repairs, this is, this is what it can do. Yes, I, I should mention that this paper that will be presented as a first part 
exactly focusing on the CO2 emissions and yeah. all these building and all these perhaps uh, these tools and uh, uh, we have been discussing it. If we push this up to the decision level, uh, as you say, uh, we pass from a passive to more, more active approach on asset management and even the decisions. Uh, from my experience, uh, uh, sometimes the decisions are quite uh, uh, ad hoc and uh, there is no rational basis to, to decide it. Uh, but I also believe, from my experience, that uh, um, we have, we all as experts in each field of uh, each one, the duty to push this to these decision makers, this audience, because sometimes they, they feel a lot of pressure to decide things and uh, they need to, to know that these tools exist. Mm -hmm. And it's also a matter of communication, how you communicate. Uh, with all respect, if you put the guideline for scientists uh, to an operator, he will not have a question of the value of that document, but how I use this, uh, how I can understand, mainly understanding how this could be beneficial, is the language that you use. <laughs> I, as I said, despite the fact that at the end this document will be very short, I don't want to be very big, five, six pages, I'm feeling until now, it's very hard to write it <laughs> properly because the language must be very assertive and efficient because sure, sure. it forces you to put in their position in a way that they will like to read this. And this is just to trigger their curiosity because then they will pick this document, pass to some colleague on the, on the company, please look to this more deeply, and then it could go down on this hierarchy of documents but we need to come from the top, not from the bottom only. This is my point of view. Okay. Thank you very much.